Jesus, uh, but ask Father God Jehovah in my name, use my name. And he said, praise God, I give you power of attorney. And whatsoever you ask him in my name, as long as it lines up with my word, he'll give it to you. Whatsoever you ask. And today we're running around wondering why. Why God isn't doing this? Why is he allowing that? Because you've not read my word. And you're not doing what I said in my word. Let's go on. He staggered not. He staggered not at the promise of God. Through unbelief. Abraham didn't let unbelief come into his mind. Now his wife was doubting there for a moment. God said, woman, why are you laughing? Well, I didn't laugh. He said, oh, but you did. Don't be lying to me. Even though she denied with unbelief and even though she doubted that she was going to have a baby. Doubt and unbelief and lying to God, Jehovah. God still forgave her that his word might be fulfilled. And church, that's all we have to know today is the love of grace and mercy back then is the same as the love of grace and mercy today. God will forgive because there's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt. Brother David, how do you know that Sarah asked God to forgive her? I don't know that I know that I know, but I, in my mind and in my spirit, I know that the moment he rebuked her and corrected her, she said, Lord, I'm sorry. And he accepted that apology. He accepted what, praise God, she's had in her heart. And he had to operate on the faith of Abraham. Abraham said, Lord, I believe. And that's all it took because he staggered not at the promise of God. Because when God promises you something, you better realize real quick that God is not going to lie to you. He's not going to lie to me. And if he promised you something and promised me something, we better back up and get ready because he's going to deliver it to us. And it says, and being fully persuaded, he wasn't halfway persuaded, the Bible says, and being fully persuaded uh, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You see, you've got to be per fully persuaded that when God tells you, I'm going to deliver something to you, you've got to be fully persuaded right then that God can do it. He's able to provide it. He's able to do it. He's able to heal us. He's able to deliver us. He's able to move the mountain. He's able to get us through the valley. He's able to do whatever we ask him to do. And church, that's where God wants the church today. He wants each and every one of us believing. He wants us walking by faith and not by the natural fly, uh, sight. The church today is trying to get an Abraham blessing uh, uh, through the faith of Thomas, uh, and you're not going to get it. You've got to have the faith of Abraham uh, to get Abraham's blessing, uh, and you can't get it on the faith of Thomas because Thomas is not going to give it to you. That faith is not going to bring it. You've got, you can't have doubt. You can't say, well, God, I want to see, and then I'll believe. That's not what Abraham said. He was fully persuaded that he that promised was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Our righteousness is as, is as filthy rags, the Bible says. We have no righteousness other than Christ Jesus. We have no righteousness other than the blood of the Lamb. You see, Jesus shed his blood that we could become heirs to the throne, that we could become the seed of Abraham, that we could be part of the family, adopted into the family is what the Word of God says. We're adopted in. And I've prayed about this, and I've preached about this, and I've talked about this, and I've studied about this so many times. You were a people of God before you became a child of God. And for those of you that don't understand what I just said, Satan has got his children here on this earth. They're never, ever, 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 ever going to be saved. They're never going to accept Christ as their Savior and Lord of their life. They want to die when on their deathbed. They're going to curse God. They're going to blaspheme God. Why? Because they're the children of Satan. Read the read book of Matthew chapter 13. Read John. Praise God, if you'll read those books, you'll find out. Read the book of Acts, that Satan has his seed here on this earth. And they're never, ever going to be saved. But God's people, God's people, the ones that are of the seed of Isaac, 
the God's people, Jesus is going to send the Holy Ghost and he's going to knock on your heart's door. And he's going to convict you of your sin. And then you have a free moral choice. You can either accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, repent of your sins and be born again and become an heir to the throne. Or you can deny and reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You can deny the Holy Ghost and say, I want to serve flesh all the days of my life. I'm not worried about heaven. And when God walks away, he never has to come back. When the Holy Spirit leaves, he never has to come back. But while he's standing there knocking is the only time that you can invite him in. Because you can't get saved when you want to. You can only be saved when the Holy Spirit is drawing you and dealing with your heart. And that's why to, today we preach the gospel. God told me, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. Them that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Them that believe not shall be damned. You see, he didn't tell me to go preach what people want to hear. He told me to go preach the truth. And that's what this ministry stands on is the blood of Jesus, the truth. And if you're watching this program right now and you know that you're sinning your life and you know that God is dealing with you and the Holy Spirit's knocking on your door, I'm going to say the sinner's prayer, and if you'll repeat this prayer with me, God will save you right where you're sitting. Father God, I come before you today. I have sin in my life. I'm asking you, Father, to place my sins under the blood of Jesus. For I believe in my heart, and I'm confessing with my mouth, that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead. This moment, I invite Jesus Christ of Nazareth to come into my heart, to be my Savior, to be Lord of my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, there's a toll-free number on the screen. If you'll call that number and tell us you just got saved. We'll send you some free literature that'll help you, that'll, and we'll pray with you. We'll stand with you. Or if I said the prayer too quickly and you're still under conviction, dial the number. There'll be a child of God there to pray the sinner's prayer with you. We'll pray with you until you get through to heaven, until you get that which you need in your life. This ministry is designed, and we're one of the few ministers. I've noticed other ministers over the last 20 years have started putting up their toll-free number for prayer. When we first started putting up an 800 number for prayer, all the other ministers would put up an 800 number for money. But with prayer, you had to dial a long distance to get prayer. And I can name off the ministers right now, nationwide, the big ministries. They'd put up the regular number for prayer, which would cost you money. But they would put up an 800 number if they wanted you to send them money. We're one of the first ministers for 25 years has put up an 800 number for you to call us for prayer. We will pay the expenses, everything. Dial the number on the screen right now. Pray for this ministry always. Support us whenever you can. And remember, Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you. He is the answer, the answer around the world. Judgment is coming. Repent from all your sins. Open up your heart and ask Jesus to.